All right. So I'll get started. And uh, um, like always, feel free to just keep using the chat the way you are using it right now. I love that and would love to see a lot more engagement. Um, and we recently updated our community just to make it easier to find more content in it. Um, so the screenshot that you see right now is the updated version of, of our community. And the top left banner over there is for Employee Center Academy. So when you go over there, you can find all the upcoming as well as recorded sessions. Um, and then something new that we launched a couple of months back is what we call Employee Center Essentials. This is a new training course from, um, from Now Learning. It's an on-demand course available for everyone. And it touches upon all the key concepts around Employee Center. So if you're looking to get your team, your stakeholders up to speed on Employee Center, highly recommend that. Then we of course all already have the Now Create and we also have the YouTube playlist where all these recordings will go. So just wanted to bring up all these resources in front of you, um, just so that you're keeping track. Now, the exciting part, let's get started with what we have uh, in the agenda for today. So we will be talking about mobile configurations for Employee Center. We'll be taking the Employee Center lens for the mobile configuration. And the assumption is typically it's going to be um, um, organizations who are deploying Employee Center or have deployed Employee Center moving into now mobile. And we will talk about how, how that can be achieved, what's common, what's not common and so on. And we have a set of different panelists for you. So one is me, uh, my name is Pooja Gupta. I'm a staff product manager with the Unified Employee Experience product team at ServiceNow. I'm joined by Sid, who owns the mobile, uh, mobile platform configurations and the experience. Uh, Sid, you wanna just say hi to this group? Hi everyone, my name is Sid Pandey. I'm a product manager uh, of the Unified Employee Experience team uh, focused on now mobile. So happy to engage with you all. Thanks, Sid. Yeah, Sid is the brain behind creating all the great looking experiences in our mobile. So um, I really appreciate you joining, Sid. Thanks. And then from the mobile platform team, we have a whole different platform, which I will be talking about shortly. We have Ian um, uh, joining us. Ian, you want to say hi and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Ian Kinnear, and I'm a product manager from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks, Ian. Um, so, so we have um, a, a good forum, so please ask your questions. Now, in terms of the flow, we will start with um, just a quick introduction to the mobile platform. Um, it may be new for some people and also the term now mobile, what it is and how it fits together. So we'll start with a brief introduction. Then we'll dive deep into a demo where we will showcase the, the basic experience around now mobile. And then we'll walk through these capabilities again from the lens of employee center and you know do a comparison of how the portal experience compares with the now mobile experience. And then we will dive deep into some configurations. We'll actually open an instance and walk you through where we are configuring things. And then we will close with some resources. So jump back the agenda and I hope you're all excited. I am starting to see some questions flow in. Um, very, very happy to see that. Please, please keep posting questions. Um, all right, so let's start with the mobile platform. So the mobile platform was actually launched a few, few releases before, and it is essentially like its own tech stack that is built on the ServiceNow um, instances or ServiceNow platform. You can compare it like uh, with the service portal tech stack that is built on the service portal, um, on, on ServiceNow platform and provides the capability to create portals. Similarly, the mobile platform provides the capability to, to build um, um, purpose-built native experiences for mobile. And this, this platform is available for all. So there is a question in the, in the Q&A whether this is available for HRST. It is available. So the mobile platform is available for all. And I'll expand on like, you know, how, what that means in, in just a few minutes. Um, and, and it comes with a set of development tools which are designed to help you quickly develop the experience that you want to create. And it comes with a set of out of box different templates for layouts, forms, buttons, and, and so on. And these, these capabilities can be, can be deployed natively on iOS and as well as Android. 
um, and, and have native dev device capabilities like you know, barcode scanning, camera, and so on. Um, the last thing that I want to highlight over here is that it does come with more than 30 out-of-box workflows, uh, specially designed for different, different uh, businesses um, like ITSM or departments is what you can say, um, CSM, um, customer success management, uh, field success management, HRSD, uh, field service management, and uh, uh, HRSD. So you would see that um, um, as, as you go and explore this further. Now, when it comes to actual apps um, or, or mobile clients, as what we say, there are two different things. One is the employee facing, which is what we call now mobile, and one is the agent facing. Um, and uh, both these need to be treated separately. So there was someone who was talking about that, you know, we have deployed it for users or deployed it for employees. And now we are looking into deploying an agent. For agent, it's actually two separate clients or two separate mobile applications that you would deploy for both these experiences. We used to have a separate onboarding one. Now we have um, um, uh, kind of consolidated that with the now mobile experience itself. So you don't have to maintain like a separate third app for it. Now, all of these experiences are created with the mobile first mindset and come natively for both iOS and Android. Um, and, um, and, and there are a lot of different capabilities which can you know, further uptake the experience that you get from it, making it more rich and making it more consumer grade. Now, in this session today, we will be focusing on the now mobile piece. So um, we will be focusing just on the employee experience and are not getting deep into the agent experience. So just want to clarify that for, to start with. Now, when it comes to now mobile, there are multiple different workflows that are available or ex experiences that are available. So on the very left is the base file system functionality. So that is basically how you access catalog, task, how you access knowledge. Um, and it's typically what a standard ITSM or HR experience would be. And then you can augment that experience with specialized experiences that you see on the right. It could be the walk-up experience for IT. It could be safe workplace or return to work experience, onboarding experience, and even like asset reservation experience. So uh, we won't be getting into that um, the right side too much and focusing more on how do we create the employee experience, the base experience um, to get started with. And then you can of course augment it with a lot more different things. Now, when it comes to that base experience, it's been a journey. It's, uh, we have uh, evolved it quite a lot since the time we started. And I'm gonna just start from Quebec um, just to keep it more uh, confined to where, where we are uh, right now. So in Quebec and before then, we used to have a separate tab for services within now mobile, a separate tab for knowledge, very similar to you know, how we had for service portal, um, um, like you had separate experiences or siloed experiences for services and knowledge and departments. Um, we had separate experiences for onboarding, walk-up experience, and each of these were like a separate app. You can almost think of it like you know, how we would have a separate portal for each of these experiences in Quebec. From Rome onwards, when we launched Employee Center, uh, we, with Employee Center, as you're aware, we consolidated all these different portals into one single employee-facing portal. That's the same approach we took in mobile as well. So we consolidated all these different experiences into one single app and moved that app to store. So now mobile is available on store similar to Employee Center uh, since Rome. And then we, we now have what we call the landing tab is called Home. We have a support tab and I'll get a little bit more into what these tabs are for. The main thing to remember in the Rome release, we, we essentially tied the experience with Employee Center with the curated experiences piece. So the taxonomy and, and the unified browse and the topic pages is the experience that is available on Now Mobile um, as well, uh, just like how it is available for Employee Center. And ever since then, we have been updating the Now Mobile app with the lens that how we can make the experience in Now Mobile more consistent with, um, with the Employee Center portal experience 
while not while making sure that the mobile first and the mobile native experiences have not been lost. So it, since then, all the store releases have been focusing on that. So um, please, please feel free to ask questions if this is confusing. But in a nutshell, we moved now mobile to store. So we now have quarterly releases. And second, we are trying to make sure the experience is consistent with employee center portal experience. All right. Now, this just gives a little bit more detail in terms of what has changed. So if you were uh, an organization who were using Now Mobile before Rome, this would be applicable. We have just changed some of the plugin names and uh, uh, consolidated all of them into Now Mobile. Okay. Now let's let's do a demo, and then you know you will get some better idea of how um, how how the experience is on Now Mobile. And, and uh, uh, we'll go from there and then compare the experience with Employee Center. While you're setting it up, I'll, I'll just answer a couple of questions that I'm seeing over here. Um, so Sandeep is asking, what is the major difference when it comes down to moving to ServiceNow store compared to being available in plugins? So I'm assuming you're talking about family plugins. The main difference is you now have quarterly releases instead of twice a year release. And second, um, um, this, when you're getting the latest release from store, you have to do it separately from the family release. The family releases typically are lagging in terms of latest functionality. So if you want to get the latest and the greatest, you have to get the latest plugin from, from store. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, once again, I'm Sid Pandey, product manager on the Now Mobile, which is our employee-facing mobile app. Now, to walk you through this experience, this is the experience that is available out of the box. So if you have any license with ITSM, HR, workplace service delivery, or anything else, this comes with the platform, and this is the experience that you would start with. So I've tried to make sure that you know, I stick to what, what you get out of the box instead of modifying this experience. The first thing I want to highlight are uh, you know, the tab structure, how this app is laid out. So we have a bunch of tabs, the main tab being obviously the landing tab that is home. Uh, for existing customers in the previous releases, it's been called uh, with different names, but now uh, this is the home tab, which has all the essential information for the employees uh, when they open the app. Followed by that, we have the support tab. And think of this tab as any way for employees to get help. Uh, since there may as ways where employees can get help by you know, scanning the content, which could either be catalog items or knowledge articles. Uh, earlier In earlier releases, there used to be separate tabs for catalog items and separate tabs for knowledge articles. We brought all of this together because eventually the employee is here for a reason and you know, they're not looking for a specific article or a, you know, a catalog. So this is uh, the support tab that essentially brings all of this together. After that, uh, we do have the health tab. So this is for customers that are, you know, licensed our workplace service delivery and safe, safe workplace. This will be an additional tab that will be available to you out of the box. Uh, along with that, we have our notifications tab. So these are all the in-app notifications that you would receive, followed by uh, there's the more tab over here, really, and which what this encompasses is any of the overflow. So if you want to define custom tabs uh, or introduce any new tabs, all of this, these will show up in the overflow. So, you know, for example, I have outreach surveys here. You could have other tabs that show up under this setting. So that's how the simple, uh, you know, the navigation structure is laid out. Now to go over really, you know, try to break down certain aspects of uh, uh, the app over here. So on the home tab, first thing that we start with here that you see is a welcome message, welcome to mobile. So this is really a content section where uh, customers can you know, modify this, they can add more content if they wanted to. It is what I would say is pretty much static, meaning you cannot customize it for every kind of user. However, if you are a, uh, what I would say an HRST uh, Pro and Enterprise customer that does have Employee Center Pro, you do have uh, availability of what I would say content experiences to you. So you can control what content displays up for which user over here on mobile in this section. So as you can see over here, this is a section where users would like to maybe put a, you know, uh, put an image that just helps them, you know, uh, you know, a welcome message and this acts as a landing page. The next thing we introduced uh, very recently is a quick link section. 
the purpose of this section is to really have any actions that you know users either would perform uh, on a repeated basis or these are common set of actions that you would have so here you could have any links uh, as, as as the name refers to either to catalog items uh, you know catalog items or knowledge articles or even links to other parts of the app can be placed over here in this particular section after this is a section where we call this as something around my item. So any of the activities that get generated for an employee around uh, and that are assigned to them, we want to bring all of them together in this section. Obviously, the most common ones that we see here are around tasks and requests. But we have a few others such as uh, assets uh, that are also displayed here. If you're using you know, the walk-up experience from ITSM, you would see your walk-up visit information over here as well along with reservation. So that is also kind of you know, present in this section. So to walk you through quickly through this section, my tasks. Now, what this would show is, this would show you all your tasks that are configured by default. So these would include your uh, approval tasks uh, that will show up here, as well as your HR tasks that will automatically show up here. One thing I will mention, since uh, Pooja will mention this later on, so task configuration is not shared with Employee Center. So you're probably familiar with the to-do configuration. If you make a change in the to-do configuration, that does not automatically reflect here, meaning your task does not automatically start showing up here. There is some additional configuration to ensure that task shows up here, as well as you know uh, the task detail uh, for that specific task as well shows up. So that was about tasks. Very quickly, I will cover uh, my requests. Now, my request covers all of the requests that an employee has raised. So these could be incidents or any catalog requests that they have submitted. This I will mention. So this does share configuration with the request filters on the portal, on the employee center and the employee center pro site. So whatever requests you see in your employee center uh, or portal, you would also see that on mobile over here. So that's, uh, that's about requests. So this is definitely a shared configuration. Other than this, we just have our assets and I mentioned our walk-up experience. So before I continue on with uh, more parts, like I'll just take a pause and see if there are any uh, specific questions at this moment of time. So there's one question which um, I don't have an answer to, but I'm hoping you do. Does Now Mobile include an alumni service center view? Uh, not at the moment. Not at, okay. Not at the moment. I will cover a one part of my demo where we do include a onboarding experience in NowMobile. So that is a pre-day one experience, but not the alumni as of today. Okay, thanks. And I see a question coming in chat. Please put them on Q&A, by the way. But um, does request also have cases? That is correct. Yes, it will have your uh, HR cases as well. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so just moving in. So this was workplace reservations. One of the other features we introduced was around favorites. So this ability for users to you know, save some of the items that they wanna quickly uh, have access to. Now the difference between, you would ask like between favorites and quick links here. So quick links is something that is more curated by uh, you know, the admin for the company, while favorites is something that is more user generated, right? So this is the user adding them, uh, adding them as favorites. One thing we do have across favorites is these are cross channel, meaning any piece of content item that you favorite across mobile is also available on portal and vice versa. So here's where you have your favorite list. Uh, you know, I, I will demonstrate the same on uh, portal as well, but you can look at your favorite list. I will go through the configuration where uh, you can define new content types. And by when I say content types, I'm referring to uh, today we have request articles that we are shipping out of the box, but you can define your own uh, entity or object to be added as a favorite, and then it starts displaying up over here as well. So that's about uh, favorites here. Now that covers, if you ask me, that covers our home tab, uh, specifically what is available out of the box. So any questions before I move to the support tab? Um, this one, and maybe when you move to support tab, that will answer it, but it is asking, like, we're currently on Roam, and does now mobile merge the service portal and employee service center, which is, I think, employee center pro, or can they be accessed separately? So I think that's a good segue into your support tab. And Yeah. Okay. Let me get into 
Because I didn't see the question, sorry. Uh, is it in the Q&A? It's in the Q&A. It's basically asking if service portal and e-employee center can be kept separate on both now. Uh, so that's a, a good question. So if uh, so, here what I've done is uh, I've logged on to a specific instance of now mobile, like you know, with a uh, with a specific URL. Now, if your question is, are you trying to keep it separate? Meaning, I'm assuming that you know you you see a separate view for these two. Yeah, so, and I'm yeah. That's what well, I, I, I'll, I'll confirm. I'll, I'll confirm this. Uh, typically, if you think about this on the portal side. You know, we had various portals, right? Uh, you had SP, HR, et cetera. Now mobile was always a unified mobile app to begin with. And how it started with was always that, you know, whether you're using ITSM, it would only show your ITSM aspect of it, uh, of content. And when you did become an HR, it would include that as well. So now mobile was always that unified uh, experience app on the mobile side to uh, begin, with, begin with that. Okay, awesome. that's helpful. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. Okay, so um, okay, so on the support tab, so this one's uh, a new tab. If I'm if I'm correct, like you know, we did introduce it uh, from uh, Rome onwards. I think specifically around the September release, there are three main sections uh, that show up on this tab. There's a recommended for you section. So how this works is essentially letting you uh, showing you all of the recommended content. Based, and this is based on uh, content uh, that people uh, around you are browsing. So, you know, similar users content, looking at popularity of content and then recommending that for you. So that's what's uh, available here. There's a similar widget recommended for you on the employee center homepage that you would see. The next similarity that we have here is popular topics. So this is based on the content that uh, users in your organization are browsing we kind of recommend you the popular topics uh, that are there at the moment. This is again aligned with your uh, employee center homepage. Uh, a couple of differences, maybe your employee center homepage has, you know, uh, it, it's a widget. It does have widget instance options to configure how many you want to show. I think in terms of popular topics here, we just have a limit uh, that is set in the app and like, you know, you can't really configure it, uh, you know, from the app, uh, app itself. The next thing what we show is the taxonomy. So just to very briefly introduce, I'm sure most of you are familiar, but we introduced this new taxonomy where the purpose was really to bring together all of the different kinds of content that a user would need when they, when they wanted to help. And all of this content was organized in a hierarchical tree-like structure to uh, ensure that users can you know, uh, navigate up and down a tree. So as you can see here, this is organized based on departments. So at my top level, I do have HR, IT, workplace, purchase and expense and legal, as you can think of them as root nodes of my, uh, my tree. Now, as I click on one of these, um, one of these topics, what I've navigated to something is called what we call as a topic page. This is a, think of this as a dynamically generated page where you, know, you can specify your template uh, that you wanna use for the page. And this would render all of the children topics, as you can see under HR. So that's first, followed by what all content is available that is associated to this topic. So in this example that you can see, I'm under HR. There are various topics I have here around pay and time, benefits, employment information, travel and relocation. All of these are shared with Employee Center. So you only configure this taxonomy once, and it works both on uh, your portal as well as mobile. Now, similarly, you have other content that would be associated would also show up uh, or show up on this page. So this is an example of a topic. As I mentioned, you have this ability to you know, filter by, which is whether you wanted to filter by an article or request, or you have a sorting ability where you just want to sort it by popular content or in an alphabetical order. So this is similar to how you would see a topic page on, uh, you know, on the portal. So I'll take a pause here and see if there are any questions on topic pages. Uh, I will cover it when it comes to configuration in terms of how uh, these can be configured specifically. No, that's it. I think you're already answering the questions that were asked, so we're good. Okay, perfect. So, uh, okay, so this covered it. Now, uh, very quickly, I'll touch on a couple of things. So there's search that is available on our mobile. 
Now, uh, I don't have this set up for this instance, but uh, right now by default, the search that is available to you is the Zing search. There's a very simple configuration that is available so that you can move on to the new AI search, uh, which is obviously a more better and uh, better search, uh, and it's a better search experience as well. So definitely just want to uh, point out that this is definitely the old experience, but this is something that is available to you. Uh, the people search part of it is only available if you are, uh, you know, if you do have the EC Pro uh, license. So that is only when people search is available to you. Otherwise, uh, you know, services and articles is obviously available to you. So that's the part about search. Uh, the next thing I wanted to cover uh, was employee profile. So when, when the user clicks on employee profile, uh, this lands them to this new employee profile tab. Uh, where about has some of this information as well as uh, we did introduce a team tab that has like you know all the details about your team. Uh, so let me uh, let, uh, to just demonstrate you know let me demonstrate this with just a better profile and impersonate a user. Okay, so I'm now in Gail's profile. Um, and very quickly, I'll navigate to her profile. So as you can see here in the about section, I have all of the details uh, for this user. If I click on the team tab, this will indicate the team for, uh, for Gail, right? So their direct reports and peers that Gail has, all of these will be displayed here. Uh, just to avoid any confusion, this is just displaying the team. Uh, this is not the org chart functionality, but this is just the team uh, for this particular user. Now, demonstrating uh, more of this. Uh, okay, just give me a minute. Okay, so another thing while I'm on this user Gale, I did want to cover was since Gale is a manager, one thing they do get to do is, uh, you know, if you are using the HR um, enterprise and life cycle events, if HR is a manager, you can also track new hires over here. So if you're a manager and you, uh, you have new hires coming in, there is a section that will start showing up for the manager profiles that will let them track their new hires as well. So this sort of covers, uh, you know, our employee profile and just cover, covering this specific part about if you're a manager, this does cover the track new hire section. Now, very quickly, what I'll do is, I'll, uh, one last part of the demo I did want to cover was, I did talk about the onboarding experience. So um, earlier we had separate mobile apps for onboarding and a separate app for the employee. But what we've done is we've unified the app so that you know eventually the person is just downloading one mobile app and not having to go through the pain of downloading separate mobile apps. So in this scenario, I will just demonstrate uh, the experience from someone who is a pre day one uh, user. So I'm going to go to Jane's uh, profile over here. And first thing you can see is the navigation structure has changed for this user. Where uh, currently they do not have the support tab as well as you know some of the other tabs that you can see that were available out of the box. They have this home tab where uh, what they would see are some of all of the requests that have been raised for that particular user, uh, which could be any, any of the onboarding activities that have been created all of the tasks related to them will also show up if any. So this is the same user. Now, once Jane uh, is onboarded, you know, and she does start, that's when she would see the complete experience as we were seeing earlier, uh, having all of the tabs and access to all of the support information as well. So this, uh, yeah, this touches on the onboarding experience or the pre-day one experience for uh, in, uh, in mobile for now employees. Sorry, for employees in normal. Yeah. I think that covered my demo. Um, Pooja, any questions we have? Um, so there's one question which I think you covered is is delegation available in now mobile? Yes, delegation is available in now mobile. So uh, it, uh, delegation does appear on the profile tab. Um, if it if it is enabled, it does appear on the profile tab. Okay, thanks. And there's one more question, which they are just clarifying if support tab is for fulfillers. So I, I can just very quickly answer yeah. that. So the whole now mobile application is for employees, and there is a separate application, which is for fulfillers. So um, uh, everything that you were looking at was was essentially um, focused on employee and, and focusing on that. 
hope that made sense. Um, all right, so Sid, thank you so much for that awesome demo because um, um, you did made my job in the next few slides a lot easier. I'm just gonna recap what Sid said and uh, they kind of demonstrate how it fits with Employee Center. Um, so essentially, when you look at Employee Center homepage, uh, which is what you see on the left-hand side here, it is getting converted or added into two different tabs on the mobile experience. Um, one is the home page, one is the home tab, and the support tab. Now, there are other nested tabs which are mostly opening us at MESP pages, and I'll talk about that briefly. But as you saw in the demo, you can literally map all the different pieces of Employee Center into these two different um, tabs on the mobile experience. Now, let's start with the home tab just to give you a recap of what you just saw in the demo. So we uh, now, it works slightly differently on mobile, and this is an important piece to know um, as you are thinking about deployment. There are pieces of this experience that can be configured along with Employee Center. And there are pieces that need to be separately configured um, for the mobile experience. So everything that you will see in green, as I'll highlight them, is something that you're configuring along with Employee Center. Everything else needs to be configured separately for mobile. And another thumb rule is MESP pages are typically you know, just configured with the uh, uh, employee center and anything that you have natively on mobile, you do have to get into the mobile platform and then you know, configure the look and feel for it. So let's start with search on the very top. So it does use the taxonomy structure and like you know, how Sid was showcasing, you would, you would leverage um, uh, a unified search across different uh, um, catalog content types, essentially. But it does require its own search profile. The search profile is not shared with the portal. And AI search is also available for mobile. So just, just want to clarify that. When it comes to employee communications on the homepage, now these need to be scheduled separately for now mobile. We'll talk about communications at the topic level. Um, they are same as the portal but the welcome message and, and the communications that you want to post on the home page or the home tab for the mobile experience need to be scheduled separately. And they do require an EC Pro license. The quick links, they work the same way as the employee center portal. Like, so it is essentially to provide you a quick link to a catalog item, an external page or, or any, of, any of the mobile pages, but they do need to be configured separately again for now mobile. And now mobile actually has the mobile platform gives it a lot of flexibility in terms of making it icons as what you see in the screenshot here or making it images and, and making it a little bit more engaging in terms of what it looks like. The my items over here are not the same as how you have the my active items in the portal. So you do configure these separately. Uh, my request here is, is shared with Employee Center. So you do see the same set of requests appear over here. But what tasks are available, how they look over here, are essentially what you need to configure separately for mobile. Now, on the home page, the my on the home tab, the my favorites piece is shared. Um, you, you do have the same uh, configuration as you have for the portal. The only piece here is like when, when you go to the my favorite page, which opens up when you see when you click on see all, um, the card for each content type needs to be defined. And I'll and, and Ian will walk through what we have uh, for defining cards um, as a tool. But essentially, if you are adding in requests, you will have to define what it looks like. Out of box, we have defined uh, the um, the the knowledge and catalog. But if you're adding anything else as an extra, you would have to define it. So my favorites is essentially shared. Now, support tab. When it comes to support tab, recommended for you is shared. Um, it's the same algorithm that we use for portal. Popular topics is the same. Um, um, it, it's the same thing as the same algorithm that we use for portal. The only difference is we just show the top six topics. Um, the browse topics is the mega menu replacement for the portal. You know, like how you have the mega menu, you have the browse topics view in, in portal, in, in the mobile space. And these are all shared. 
Um, now, before I get further into like when you click on the topic page, they open up as an MSP page. And I want to highlight what we mean by an MSP page. Um, essentially, this is this is an embedded web page, or you could also call it a browser page opening within the app. And uh, they have the native look and feel, and that's how we, that's the goal when we are building these pages. Like we want it to be embedded, so you don't have to leave the app ever. And second, these are native in terms of mobile look and feel. Um, but essentially, it's, it, is, uh, it is a portal page that is opening up within the page, uh, within, within the app. So it's a slash MESP page and MESP is mobile employee service portal page. So it's essentially a service portal page which is optimized for a mobile look and feel and it opens up directly within the app as an embedded web page. I hope that makes sense. If not, please, please, um, um, please um, ask your questions and we will answer. Now I do see a question which is about Employee Center Pro is required. So you do need Employee Center Pro for the communications pieces. The communications capability requires Employee Center Pro, but everything else that you are seeing over here does not require Employee Center Pro. Now let's look at the topic page. Now these topic pages are opening when you click, when you're seeing the browse topic and you click uh, on one of the topics over there. Um, and you can see the look and feel of what you have in Employee Center, which you see in the center here, and what you have in mobile, which you see on the right hand side, is very similar. So it's essentially the same browser page. It's, it's the same page that is opening in a mobile view. Now I do want to highlight one thing in my screenshots. The communications are not visible on the portal uh, on the mobile screen, but essentially you would have communications on top. So the topic header automatically renders the same way as you it would render on portal. Um, subtopics would again be visible the same way. And the unified browse is also visible. There is a slight difference in terms of what is visible under the unified browse. On the portal view, you would have content tagged to the topic as well as subtopics visible. And in the mobile view, just to optimize it for the mobile experience, we only showcase the content that is tagged to the topic and not the subtopics. Um, beyond that, everything else is similar. And the other widgets that you have on the portal view, which is like quick links videos would ultimately just come up at the bottom in the mobile view. Let me pause here. Um, Sid, are you seeing any questions that we should answer um, live? Give me a moment. So looking at it, uh, so looking at the latest ones, uh, does that mean that any portal page connected to EC will show up on a browser page within the now map? Is it going to scale appropriately to size? So, uh, Jamie, to your question around specifically, if you if you invoke any portal page on this, yes, we will take care of uh, you know uh, assuming that you know that page does render properly as a responsive page, etc. We will uh, you know we will take care of it. So, if you invoke the page URL and like you know with a slash mesp slash whatever the portal page is, we will take care of the theming. We will take care of stripping out some of the menu items, etc., to make it look more uh, mobile. -based. Um, and I'm seeing a question which I don't know the answer for. Like there is a get help out of box widget on portal. Is that available on mobile? Do you know? Uh, so I'll have to check the get help. Uh, we do have a request IT assistance. And there's also, uh, once you're using our universal request, there is a version of get help available. So I'm not sure if they're referring to the universal request version of get help or just the previous version of get help that used to exist on service portal. Yeah, I suspect it's the universal uh, request. But yeah, if that is available, um, yeah. it, if it's activated, it will be available. Um, Gaurav is asking if the slash ESC theme updates will translate over to slash MESP pages. Oh, that is not, uh, they do not automatically translate. So MESP has its own theme variables, which align to the native mobile theme. So just to make sure that MESP is aligning with the native mobile theme, while ESC is obviously aligning to the overall portal theme, et cetera. So yes, so they don't automatically get translated. Those are separate themes and they align to separate uh, separate channels, right? Yep, awesome, thank you. And then Aaron was asking if new hires can sign any documents on the app and I'm suspecting the answer is yes, if they have the mm -hmm. licenses for it. That is correct. Awesome, 
Thanks. In the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and we will take the questions um, uh, via the panel. So employee profile works the same way. We, you, like, I'm not going to spend too much time here, but uh, Sid demoed this. You have the, the pages are essentially just mirroring, uh, like, yeah. like it's just following the same thing as we had in the portal view. And which, if I can maybe, just add, there was a question which I did miss from the demo. So, yeah, sure. uh, uh, if you're using the new employee profile that uh, is released as a part of San Diego uh, as in Feb 22 release, now on the mobile profile, as you can see here, which is number three, there's a uh, button that appear here appears here to show new more profile details. And when you click on it, as you can see here in the rightmost screenshot, you can bring in any more information from either the HR profile table or the user table. So that is something available to customers uh, that they want to bring over. And these same sections are also displayed on the portal side as well. So there's a shared configuration on uh, having that information on the employee profile, both on portal and normal. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. Um, now, before we get into configurations, yeah, do you want to just give everyone a quick overview of the dev tools that we have from mobile platform? Sure. So as part of the now platform, we've released three tools to help you build out and maintain your mobile configurations. And those are available to install via store plugins. Uh, first mobile app builder, uh, that's actually been available since the Rome release and it's our low code next gen app, which allows you to build out native screens, native mobile screens and functions. It actually replaces studio for mobile development if you've used that in the past uh, and allows you actually to edit all the out of box mobile scopes. It's also designed to make things easier to develop mobile uh, screens by, um, you know, allowing you sort of validating uh, selected options and also allowing you to duplicate existing components easily when you want to use them as a starting point for something new. Um, so that's a very quick overview of Mobile App Builder. Mobile Card Builder works together with Mobile App Builder to allow you to build the mobile screen cards and templates for those cards. So, um, you know, if you see in the screenshot in the middle, uh, we can see a card uh, being a template being defined. Um, so you do that um, to place where things are supposed to go and then configure the card to actually place things in there like um, a priority or a state, et cetera, et cetera, into a card. You can also, in the most recent version of Mobile Card Builder, apply uh, UI policies, for example, to apply conditional styling elements on the cards directly within the tool. Um, so, you know, think color coding your state or your priority. Um, and finally, we have mobile publishing. Um, that is a special tool, and really it's more a workflow than a tool. Um, that allows you to create your own custom branded versions of our mobile apps, which can be distributed privately or via the public app stores. Meaning, instead of showing the app showing on your mobile device, uh, name ServiceNow Agent or Now Mobile, and our logo being on that icon, it would have your own company logo uh, name um, for the app that you choose. Um, and also, the splash screen can be customized as well. It's, it's really uh, a tool intended for sort of more advanced brand, very brand conscious customers. Um, and I would say it's most often used for the now mobile app. Uh, so in other words, intended for the employee use cases. So it's just a quick overview of all three. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, if, if you guys have any questions on these, we're not going deep in the platform and not going deep on these, um, these capabilities, but please post them. Um, and I'll share some resources at the end to highlight where you can go to learn more about them. Um, we are running out of time, but Sid, do you want to just take a couple minutes and just showcase a few basic configurations just so if, if people have questions around that? Sure, I can do that. So uh, I don't think the intent of this window is to let you walk you through all the configurations, but uh, specifically look at some of the shared configurations. So one thing I wanted to quickly cover, which has come up um, uh, as a Q&A. So this was around the get help uh, widget is I'm assuming this question came up and this get help, uh, clicking on this get help takes you to a bunch of catalog items. 
So uh, if you ask me, is this available out of the box? Uh, no, we don't have this available uh, on out of the box where you're gonna, you could automatically navigate to this categories, et cetera. So just if, if people were looking for that same experience uh, that is not available on our mobile uh, out of the box. However, as I mentioned, you can individually link some of these to the quick link section as you wanted. Uh, that is uh, supported at least. Okay, so now coming for the set, uh, for specifically the shared configurations. Now there are a couple of them. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll I'll do uh, I'll do some of them very very quickly. Now specifically, there are three areas I mentioned. So one was the taxonomy or the MESP page. So just to uh, open that over here. So the taxonomy is shared between uh, between portal and mobile. So what you're doing here is you're setting up your taxonomy. So you, you have your employee taxonomy that is available. You're setting up your topics. You're set, associating content to these topics. So that is the process you're going through once, right? No difference in terms of that. Now, how, how does it work that, you know, you're using the same taxonomy for uh, both portal as well as mobile? So for that to associate any taxonomy to a portal, so if I just go to my portal record, as you can see here, there would be a my employee center portal that I see. And if I open this particular record specifically, uh, what I will see over here, there's a tab related to the taxonomy over here. So in this tab, what I can do is I can associate the taxonomy uh, that I want to associate to the portal and it will start showing up on the portal. Uh, just giving you an example here, right? You will start seeing all uh, the topics, the root level topics being populated, your popular topics, et cetera, will start showing up. So that works that way. Now, specifically for mobile, uh, what you need to do is when you go to portals, there's a one portal record that we use to render all of the web views. It is called mobile employee service portal, or in a lot of conversations, you'll hear MESP. So if you open this portal, a lot of this portal for now is, is, is a read only record, but as you can see, there's a taxonomy associated to this portal. So here is where if I was in the edit mode, you can go ahead and assign the same taxonomy that, we, that you were using for portal. And that way you will get the support tab and it will render exactly the same. So you don't have to configure these separately. However, I will say if there are certain catalog items that you have excluded that you know, do not show up on mobile, all those configurations will be, uh, will be honored and that catalog item will not show up on mobile. So that is in uh, very brief about uh, you know uh, taxonomy. Any questions on taxonomy and specifically configuring this for mobile? Could you let me know? Otherwise, I'll just move quickly. Yeah, um, yeah. Let I don't see any questions that we need to. Yeah, we're also running out of time, so let's just move yeah. quickly. Okay, so next one was favorites. Uh, so this was uh, introduced in uh, San Diego. It does work for Rome instance as well. I think you need to take the May 22 upgrade. Uh, how we've defined this is in a very generic way where you first need to define your new content type, whether you're calling it an article, request, anything, you know, any object that you want to now allow users to favorite. So you define this new content type Next thing, what you have to go through is a configuration for uh, this content type. So just to uh, display it here, I'll show you an existing one is something called a favorite content configuration. So if you think about this, this is nothing but telling you, it's giving information to us that like, you know, okay, it seems like uh, catalog, uh, sorry, knowledge is something that we want to favorite. W what is, what, what fields should I show when someone does favorite this article in my favorites list? Is this available for desktop and mobile both? Um, you know, are, whether there are any secondary fields to show, do I want to show an image in, uh, in that favorites or not? And similarly, there's a navigation configuration, meaning when I click on that favorite, where do you want me to go? So all of this carries over to mobile. There are two additional settings and uh, one additional settings uh, is around setting the badge, uh, badge for that favorite, so badge icon. So in terms of setting that badge icon, you have to create a new mobile UI rule uh, where you set, uh, you create the badge icon in your condition. You are essentially uh, validating the sys ID of that content type. So this year, if you ask me, is, is nothing but the sys ID of the favorite content type, which was article. 
And here you can go ahead and define what icon you want to display. So that's the first part. And the second one, which for mobile you have to do is, you know, in mobile, like favorites for cards, like I was showing you. So what happens when you click on that card? So that thing specifically, what you have to do is, there are two cards that are available for favorites in mobile. They're already available. Like there's a favorite with image and favorite without image. So what you can do is go to both of those cards and here just add a function where uh, depending on uh, whether it, uh, what type you added, where would you want the user to navigate? So those are the only two things you need to do to make sure it starts working on uh, mobile as well. Otherwise, a lot of the configuration is shared, meaning that it's not showing up on uh, both the places as in portal and mobile. I, I know I went through this very, very quickly and we are getting to a uh, to time here. So, you know, I'll definitely pause at this point of time. Thank you so much, Sid. But I do think this this would have been very helpful. And uh, um, like we we have our community to ask questions um, after this, but keep your questions coming in in the Q&A panel as well. I want to take a couple of minutes. We may go over by a minute, but um, um, hopefully the recording is there so you can refer it over there. We have a rich set of resources for understanding mobile platform and doing like a lot of the questions that we have coming in in the Q&A can also be addressed if you just go to this community page. And this is on service to our community is called Mobile Apps and Platform. Um, really rich and a lot of new content over there. We also have Academy sessions, which are done for mobile app, very similar to Employee Center. Again, you can refer it from the community and there is also a series on YouTube, very similar to Employee Center. And then we have a now learning course, which is again uh, at mobile and gets you up to speed in terms of all the different dev tools that uh, Ian was talking about. Um, and it's something that I really highly recommend if you are getting into um, getting into deploying mobile. 